super excited to talk to you guys today a little bit about Facebook. First of all, I want to ask you guys, have any of you guys completely abandoned Facebook in your business or gone to another social media site? No. How many of you guys have noticed a lot of decreased engagement or had maybe that whisper within your team where, what's happening with Facebook? Is it broken? <laughs> That was kind of what happened to me. I was running my business more on Insta stories and Instagram and doing a lot more email marketing than really using Facebook like I had in the past. And I got kind of stuck within my day, found it was like four o'clock in the afternoon and I had not done a post yet on Facebook. And so I would just go throw up a post, sometimes sharing my whole life story, releasing all those skeletons out of my closet and realizing that I'm not getting any engagement. And that when I was like, uh-oh, like this is a problem that I have to figure out and figure out what's going on. And I really noticed this back in September. There was a big algorithm change. And so I took a good two weeks really diving into Facebook and learning about Facebook because I couldn't just abandon it. I knew that I had to really figure out what is Facebook all about. And that's what I'm gonna share with you guys here today. Hopefully you guys give you some great tools to not only you guys to use, but also to be able to just share with your team. So first of all, let's take a look at what is the mission behind Facebook. Facebook is there to give the power to share and make the world more open and connected. The purpose is to increase engagement in an online space. Oftentimes when we think about social media, we think about the technology part of it, right? We think about the posts that we're gonna do, we think about the buttons, but we leave out the social part of social media, which is really the most important part. It's really about the relationships, the people, um, the communication that you're having. And that's really what I learned, learning more and more about Facebook, was that somebody might be able to have the same kind of posts going out on social media, but it really has to do with that relationship equity that that person had already built. So, and that can really change, right, with the quality and the quantity of that. And so oftentimes, somebody might start on social media and only have like 100 friends or so on Facebook, where somebody else might start and have 1,000, but in those 1,000, they've got a lot more relationship equity. And so when your affinity, and we'll talk about that in a second, what exactly affinity is, just understand that it all goes down to really that relationship building. And that's really what Facebook is trying to emphasize, is real life relationships. So what really is affinity? I know that we hear this word a lot, you know, a lot of people kind of interchange algorithm and affinity. Affinity is just part of the Facebook algorithm. It's really your social media currency or how much connection you have with each fan. So think of affinity as a relationship, okay? Oftentimes we think that, you know, if we can get somebody to like and comment and share, it's going to obviously raise the probability of future content but it's because of that law of reciprocity. We have to get other people to like and comment and share on our stuff. It's not necessarily because you might scroll a timeline and like a bunch of posts, and that's why their stuff is gonna start showing up into your newsfeed. It doesn't really work like that. You have to give, 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 and then maybe you're gonna get. But it's the law of reciprocity. It has nothing to do with you, you know, going through and just liking a bunch of posts, and because of that, Facebook's gonna show you more things. So that was one thing that I really learned. The other thing is really, it comes down to thoughtfulness, is really that ultimate algorithm hack. So if you stay and just be really thoughtful and build natural relationships, you're going to always be able to um, beat that Facebook algorithm. Did it go? No? Okay. Um, I think these are okay. Um, okay, there's three things that affect affinity. The first thing is mutual connections that they have with you. The second is mutual friends engaging. And the third is recent interaction is the most important, okay? So recent interaction actually gives you a 16% when it goes into the Facebook algorithm, and that's what we're gonna kinda of talk about today. I'm gonna to give you guys five different factors that you guys can use in your business that are gonna play along with Facebook's algorithm or Facebook's affinity. Okay, number one is really interacting before you post. I want you guys to start thinking of this as priming your timeline. Like I mentioned before, you guys have to give before you get. So I might have gone out and shared all the skeletons in my closet, released that I was an anorexic, that I'd been through divorce, that I had, you know, just a really crazy childhood in my life, and I might have been authentic. 
but I wasn't giving to other people first. I wasn't paying attention to my audience, and so therefore my feed was being um, kind of weighed down on that, as far as the edge ranking goes. So I had to really put the importance back into my relationships in, within Facebook. Interacting before you post, thinking about it as really t priming your timeline. So now I spend about 10 minutes every day before I go and do one of my own posts, and I use Facebook lists, and I go through and I comment thoughtful comments on people that I really want to make sure that know that I care and that I love about them and I'm there to support them. In just doing that one simple little task daily or before I do my post, it's really helped to increase my engagement. So about twice a day, I'm doing two posts a day, but beforehand I'm going through and making sure that I'm really interacting with people. I know we think that timing of posts is really important, but it's not as important as the relationships and the recent interaction. So if Facebook deems that the relationship is important, then you're gonna be seeing more versus just the timing of the post. So, and the other thing to really think about this too is that, like I said, it's the law of really reciprocity with this, okay? So it's more being really, really thoughtful in your comments and using, um, comments that really look like conversations, and that's kind of my tip of number two, is using, making sure that when you're commenting on somebody that it's more about conversations, right? That you wanna make sure that it resembles real, real life. Um, Facebook really wants you to get social and bring that social back into the social media part. When you think about comments, I want you to think about comments being king of all right now on Facebook. Comments actually weigh more at 8%, at 8% versus an emoticon at 3% and a like at 1%. So when you reply with just a like or just an emoticon, you're really killing that conversation. Think about keeping the conversation going within your timeline. So if somebody is like, leaves a comment, for example, say you ask what outfit you wanna wear and somebody says something, instead of saying, you know, thanks girl for leaving the message, the asking comments back in there is not only gonna help with that original post, but it'll help with future posts as well. Again, it's that recent interaction and you're also deeming that there's a relationship there that's important. So getting those conversations flowing back and forth is really important. If you have somebody that just comments once on your post, it's gonna help with that post affinity. But if you can get them commenting back and forth, it's gonna help with future posts. All right, the third tip I'm gonna share with you guys is being mindful of who you guys add into your network. Like, I don't know about you guys, but when I, for a while, I thought that having 5,000 friends on Facebook was like the best idea ever. And I remember like having like a race of trying to get there. But a lot of those people that I have friends with aren't necessarily people that are in my tribe. And so sometimes I found myself scrolling Facebook and realizing that some of these posts were annoying, some of these posts were like totally down, and half these people I don't even know where the heck I found them from, right? And so I, I personally got into a habit of I knew that I had to start unfriending people because they weren't really people in my niche. So having 5,000 friends on Facebook really isn't the best idea if they're not necessarily people that are in your tribe. Um, the other thing that I want you guys to think about is you know checking out their network and checking out what they're all about before you add it into your network. Um, Facebook does a good job of suggesting friends of friends and suggesting different friends for you, but if that person isn't interacting on Facebook or isn't social on Facebook very often, then most likely they're not gonna be there to see your post or to engage with your post. And that's what you really need. You need to have people that are actively on social media and actively engaging on social media as well. The, the, to go along with this is that every time that you add in or take away people on your newsfeed, I want you guys to really think about it does kind of mess around with your algorithm. So don't add in a bunch of people on one day and don't get rid of a bunch of people on one day because it's gonna mess around with your algorithm a little bit. I know that this is gonna sound horrible, but this is what I do. I go through my birthdays and if somebody doesn't really align with where I'm at and where my goals are, I get rid of them. I mean, my Facebook is my business. And I know that sounds horrible, but it's super duplicatable and something that I can easily teach my team. All right, um, authenticity. Now, I know the other girls up here talked a lot about authenticity, and so my authenticity um, information for you guys is a little bit different. 
but copying and pasting other people's posts, it really does lower your engagement. I don't know about you guys, but if you copy somebody else's post, for example, Melanie Mitchell is my upline, so I take a lot of the information that she shares, or I'm sitting here right now looking at some beautiful bombshell girls in front of me, I take some of their information that they share, it will show, you guys see that, right? You know, you can see in your pages, you copy that, that post. And so Facebook knows that, and Facebook will lower your engagement because of that. I don't know if you've ever seen kind of, kind of the glitch sometimes behind Facebook, but there'll be a picture that might appear, and there's like a glitch behind it, and you might see words um, for example, it might see like girl, beach, ball, and there's like wording that goes behind that. It's because every post has a coding and has a source that goes behind that. So if you find something that you really like, you know, instead of copying somebody else's content, I like to use, you know, just a Pinterest board and keep the information there and look to see what kind of qualities in that post made it go organic or what qualities in that post that I can use and entertain my own story. Um, and obviously doing the call to actions on a lot of our posts and staying relevant is really important. And then using the new tools in our toolbox. Facebook is always giving us new tools to use, and when you're using them, you're gonna be helping Facebook market those new tools. So every time you guys see Facebook using com and coming out with new tools, use those tools, because those tools are gonna be used more. I know you guys have seen recently the Facebook, the blocks, um, the post wording, they've come out with all different kind of backgrounds and stuff like that now. So anytime you use something like that that is new, it's going to be helping with your Facebook algorithms. Any kind of new things that you can use is going to help you out, including Facebook stories, Video is king when it comes to Facebook right now. As you guys probably know, I know a lot of us are kind of trying to jump on that live bandwagon, but Facebook really ranks videos as, as priority posts. And 1% of posts are video, but it counts for 7% of all reach. So use videos. Facebook Live is a very, very powerful tool that we can use. And one study that I saw on Entrepreneur Magazine was that it has allowed us to increase our engagement by 1,000 to 1,500% more effect because of the affinity. Think about how many different comments you can generate in just a Facebook Live versus even just an interactive post. So if you've noticed decreased engagement on your pages, get used to using Facebook Live and you'll be able to not only build more relationships, you'll be able to learn about you, more authentic, um, but also be able to just elicit more comments. And like I said to you guys before, comments really are king when it comes to Facebook. All right, so with all the different algorithm changes, I think the most important to really thing to share with you guys is this, is that relationships are gonna be king. No matter what happens, more and more people are gonna be added onto Facebook, more tools are gonna come your way. I'm sure you're gonna have a lot more frustration, but keep it simple, keep it at the relationship part, keep it at the genuine conversations, keeping it at giving, 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 and you will get, and you will always beat the algorithm. Hope that this helps you guys today and gives you guys some powerful tools to be able to share with you guys.